When scrolling through my YouTube feed, I've noticed quite a few Helldivers 2 videos covering the best stratagems and equipment in the game. While that's all well and good, it hurts my heart that all the less than desirable equipment in this game doesn't get a fair shake. While I know it's enticing to go with the meta, we need to take the time to let all the diligences, eagle smoke strikes, and stim pistols of the world know that they are loved. I will also be using other weapons and equipment in the meta as a benchmark comparison for these items and stratagems. While few things can beat the autocannon, quasar, and eagle cluster strikes, what's fun is not always what's efficient. That and these stratagems are only as good as the person who uses them. I will also be factoring in difficulty. To be more forgiving on some of these items, I will not be doing Super Helldive as I believe that difficulty 10 is meant to be played with the absolute top tier gear to win the slugfest that is Super Helldive. I also acknowledge that what might be decent against bots might not be good against bugs and vice versa. Let's start with the Arc Thrower and Arc Tower. If you need to channel your inner Palpatine, look no further than this perfect duo of death as you unwittingly channel the dark side right into your teammates. Even if they accuse you of killing them, you always have plausible deniability due to the fact that these weapons have a mind of their own. I was also going to include the Blitzer on this list until I realized that this bad boy kinda slaps. The Blitzer and Arc Thrower are relatively safe as long as your teammates, loved ones, and award-winning Bashan Fruze dogs are behind you. The Arc Turret is an entirely different story. While getting friendly fired by turrets in Helldivers 2 is a fairly common occurrence, the Arc Tower is a teammate killing machine. Whilst other turrets have an aggro range and will not target the player directly, the Arc Turret will zap you straight back to the SES Patriot of Patriotism if you dare step into its radius. This makes it incredibly tricky to use when playing with randoms, and your social anxiety refuses to let you talk to strangers on the internet to let them know they're about to get ziggity zapped. As far as usability goes, it fares well against most light to medium bug types. The call-in time is pretty decent, with a max upgraded ship, clocking in at 1 minute and 36 seconds. While I firmly believe that the Arc Tower is still a very weak choice compared to other turrets, the elements of randomness still make it quite fun to use. Now for the Arc Thrower. This bad boy just cannot get it right. The history of the Arc Thrower has been quite rocky since launch, with one of the biggest issues of it crashing lobbies randomly upon using it. Thankfully, that issue has been fixed, but it's a mere footnote in the balancing issues of the Arc Thrower. The Arc Thrower has an awkward medium to short range, and the arcs are incredibly inconsistent when fighting bugs and bots alike. It's not great at taking down small, medium, or large targets, and bringing something like the Grenade Launcher would be a much better pick for crowd control. One of the redeeming qualities of the Arc Thrower is its ability to stun enemies, but to be able to do that, you have to ensure your team teammates aren't in the blast radius and have teammates nearby to kill what you've stunned because you're doing very little damage. The argument could be made of its reliability being on the far low end due to the unlimited ammo, but the quasar and laser cannons have infinite ammo and do not suffer from the severe issues of the arc thrower. When the stars do occasionally align, you can get some okay value from it against bots, but this is few and far between. If you insist on using an arc weapon, the blitzer is much better for crowd control and is, in my opinion, more fun. Moving on, the flame pistol. The flame pistol was a hard one to gauge whether to be on this list. This big lighter on steroids has the same damage output as the primary and stratagem flamethrowers, just minus the range and canister capacity. The reason it's being brought up in this list is that you'd be much better off taking the primary weapon flamethrower if you're saving a slot for a stratagem weapon. The limited range is something that makes it incredibly awkward to use and compared to its counterparts, and with the goal of flamethrowers being to put out continuous mid to high tier damage, it really doesn't make sense in general for this weapon to be feasible even against bugs. While we're on the topic of secondary weapons, let's bring up the stim pistol. While in theory this could be a very good idea, Helldivers 2 is still very much so a fast-paced game, and trying to shoot your friend with a stim pistol as you're both being blown up by rockets or getting devoured by bugs is incredibly hard. As fun as it would be to play the medic role, no amount of stims can outweigh the potential value of a senator, machine pistol, or grenade pistol. In my opinion, the stim pistol would be significantly better if you were able to use it on yourself. With the large ammo capacity, this would likely make the stim pistol insanely overpowered, resulting in a much-needed nerf to reduce the ammo capacity. Next, let's talk about smoke. Now, naturally bringing smoke grenades, eagle smoke strikes, and orbital smoke strikes all at once is a bad idea. That said, the idea of using concealment in Helldivers 2 mid-combat is not only unnecessary, it can also be a hindrance due to it blocking your own visibility. A non-lethal stratagem or grenade serves very little purpose if it cannot at the very least stun the enemy. Whether they lost sight on you or not is entirely irrelevant due to the fact that you still very much so need to kill whatever's trying to kill you, and having an Eagle 500 is significantly more helpful for dispatching your enemies than a puff of smoke. If your goal is to blind or disorient enemies, a much better pick would be gas damage or EMS equipment. 
equipment. Taking a look at one of the primary weapons now, let's talk about the Diligence. The Diligence is a semi-automatic rifle with a 20 round magazine that can dish out 165 damage per shot. Its counterpart is the Diligence Counter Sniper Rifle, boasting a 15 round magazine and 200 damage with medium armor penetration. The Counter Sniper outclasses the Diligence in every way except for ammo. Even with the increased ammo capacity, the Diligence still doesn't come close to the value the Counter Sniper gives on the battlefield. Being able to dump 15 rounds of medium armor pen is considerably more useful than 20 rounds with no armor pen. Next up on the chopping block is landmines. Naturally, positioning is always the key to using mines efficiently, but even so, it is difficult to get the same value from mines as you would from an eagle or orbital stratagem. This due to them being an expendable stratagem that doesn't even come close to the killing power of a cluster bomb, and their brutally slow cooldown of two and a half minutes makes them a very poor pick. I believe this could be solved by making them more available during missions, by decreasing their call-in time by a full minute and adding an upgrade to the ship that allows you to call them in twice before going on cooldown. Let's talk about one of our favorite canine companions, the guard dog. And no, not the laser one or the get gassed idiot one. The machine gun guard dog is a guard dog with a machine gun attached to it. Shocking, I know. Unlike the laser guard dog, it needs to constantly resupply by returning to the user's backpack. The constant interruptions and in firing rate and low damage output put it at a massive disadvantage when comparing it to the laser guard dog. Some of the redeeming qualities of this guard dog are the medium armor pen rounds and the significantly lower chance of it accidentally killing you. Even with these though, it simply can't match the reliability and killing power of the laser guard dog. I believe increasing the magazine capacity by double or even triple would help close this gap quite a bit. Let's discuss boosters. As a benchmark, I will be comparing the highly picked boosters with the less desirable ones. Boosters like Space Pod Optimization stamina boost and experimental infusion are all picked because of their constant reliability and the consistent value they provide throughout the mission. The stinky poopy boosters I will be looking at in today's video are as follows. UAV recon booster, expert extraction pilot, and dead sprint. With the exception of maybe solo play, using UAV booster to have a larger detection radius doesn't serve much benefit to your team. With the exception of foliage heavy maps, it's not hard to detect enemies by simply seeing and hearing them. The baseline radar is also quite strong at letting you know when the enemies are close enough to be an issue, and a boost of the already large radius is outright unnecessary. To make matters worse, there is a terminated modifier that makes the radar completely useless. Expert Extraction Pilot is just straight up useless. If it were to reduce the extract timer by 75%, then it would be a reasonable pick, but it only reduced the extract timer by a whopping 20 seconds. Taking a health booster or muscle enhancement would provide much more value during the average 25 to 30 minutes of time large missions last than the 20 seconds off the 2 to 3 minute extract timer. Our last booster is the brand new Dead Sprint. This booster allows you to keep sprinting at the cost of your health. While it doesn't take very much health from you while you're still sprinting, I'd much rather have a normal stamina boost or experimental enhancement as you're able to stem and get your zoomies on immediately. I think a neat adjustment to this booster would be to give the player a 10% speed boost as soon as they start to dip into their health pool, acting as an adrenaline mechanic. Last but certainly not least is the throwing knife. Obviously this is a meme weapon, but I'd be doing this community a disservice by not at least mentioning this beautiful piece of democratic steel. The throwing knife damage output is sadly low for what it is, boasting a measly 250 damage. A fun fact, if you try hard enough, you can not only catch the knife with your body, but it will straight up destroy your entire head. I also think I tried 20 times until I got this right, but totally worth it nonetheless. While incredibly fun to throw at your friends, it's not in any way, shape, or form useful against bots or bugs. That'll do it for this vid though, don't forget to drop me a like and a sub, let me know what you guys thought of this roundup of stratagems and equipment. Did I get it wrong on some of these, and did I miss any that you think should have been on this list? With that all said though, I'll see ya in the next one. Oh, I wasn't recording.